What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Thinking about a lot of things these days. As you know, I I think think a lot about Christian nationalism, about eschatology, and of course about reformed theology and I so I wrote that book, my first book. It's a is about 200 little pages. This book was the result of years and years of me trying to figure out what the Bible says about salvation, about election, about God's sovereignty. And so I, after I finished my, my master's in theology, I, I came up with an outline and this was around COVID and everybody was at home and I ended up writing it in a few months and came up pretty well. It's not really long, but I think it's complete and covers the basics. And then I, at the same time, I was thinking a lot about apologetics and presuppositionalism and the, the way the apologists always talk just really irritated me. You know how they say, we can't know the Bible is true. We can't believe the Bible unless our human reason first you know proves that it's true which is to say that human reason is a superior authority and so it it took me a little while and that book is was even shorter and it's just an ebook but it's all about you know trying, trying to dismantle what they believe what the apologists believe about human reason and and how they deal with atheism, how they deal with the gospel, with scripture, and how they, they think that they're doing God a favor by helping him. By pushing the Bible aside and saying, here is our, our big brain who figured, which figured all this stuff out, and now you can believe in God because of our intelligence, because of our reason, because of our science and our evidence. And, you know, of course it's nonsense. So I wrote that, and and so now I've been thinking a lot about Christian nationalism, as you know, and, and how it relates to eschatology, and the law of God, and how the law of God relates to the gospel, and how we need, we must have the law of God as our law, as civil law, and we used to, back when America began. There's evidence of many localities, many states giving honor to God. There's something I read about Hawaii when they were first created. They, they talked about Jehovah. They mentioned Jehovah. And so all these things and my plan is when I finish this book on Christian nationalism, and again it's going to have eschatology, it's going to is going to have post mill. It's going to present the ideas and say, you know, because I believe post mill is basically Christian nationalism. I mean, all kings, all nations, like MacArthur keeps saying. All kings, all nations. In the history of the church and how it's expanded over time, fulfilling the prophecy in Daniel, I think it's Daniel 3 or 4. And, but, but one thing that I wanted to do is talk about the Enlightenment. And because I think the Enlightenment was basically the beginning of where we are now. When the Enlightenment was back in the 17th century. And I grabbed this book a few days ago. And they basically say the Enlightenment just kind of pushed religion off to the side and said that's just superstition, you can have your religion, but we don't want it anymore. We don't want anything to do with it. This was John Locke, this was Rene Descartes, and I think they mentioned Isaac Newton, but I think he was a Christian. And he talks about uh, Immanuel Kant, not a Christian. And so these are some of the things that they that they say in this book. And these are the, like the central tenets of the Enlightenment. Talking about the men who 
were the big the big philosophers. Who is this? Uh, the French philosopher D'Alembert. He and his fellow intellectuals, he assumed, would realize the project begun by the Renaissance to lift the darkness that fell with the Christian triumph over the virtues of classical antiquity. By antiquity, I'm assuming he means the Greeks and the Romans who molested boys and murdered people by the thousands in the Colosseums. They generally embraced the new commercial civilization and its values, seeing it as a progressive reforming force that would undermine the dead hand of aristocratic privilege and religious fanaticism. What was the message of these Enlightenment intellectuals? What were their ideals? They believed that unassisted human reason, not faith or tradition, was the principal guide to human conduct. Have courage to use your own reason. That is the motto of the Enlightenment. Kant. Kant wrote in 1784, Everything, including political and religious authority, must be subject to a critique of reason if it were to commend itself to the respect of humanity. So, yeah. Men first, God second. Men are wiser than God. Men are wiser than the Bible, than Scripture, than Christianity, than Christ. Particularly suspect was religious faith and superstition. Humanity was not innately corrupt, as Catholicism taught. Nor was the good life found only in a beatific state of otherworldly salvation. Pleasure and happiness were, were the ends of life and realizable. In this world, this, the natural universe, governed not by miraculous whimsy of a supernatural God, was ruled by rational scientific laws which were accessible to human beings through the scientific method of experiment and empirical observation. So basically, they, they, they wanted all the things that they liked about Christianity without God without his law, without his restrictions. They wanted to keep all the good stuff, you know, like order out of chaos, that God created an orderly world. They wanted, you know, the knowledge that God gives us when, when we explore and observe. They just didn't want the restrictions, you know, to their own pleasures. Science and technology were the engines of progress, enabling modern men and women to force nature to serve their well-being well and further their happiness. I mean, that's part of Genesis 1. Subdue the earth, and that's what God commanded. But they also wanted to keep part of Christianity and also serve their own pleasures. And this is what he says right here. The Enlightenment valorized the individual and the moral legitimacy of self-interest. It sought to free the individual from all varieties of external corporate or communal constraints. Yeah, like, like the Word of God. Like, like the church says, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. And it sought to reorganize the political, moral, intellectual, and economic worlds to serve individual interests. Virtually all the Enlightenment theorists followed the lead of Locke in demanding religious toleration. Religion removed from public life and public authority would be reserved for the private sphere of individual preference and individual practice. So... A big part of what I wanted to put in this book was to go through this Enlightenment philosophy and, and try and trace how it's led us here to where we're murdering our own children, we're castrating them. These kids at this school in Utah. People who dress up in costumes of animals are apparently distracting other students at the school. Not only do their classmates go to school clad in animal getup, but they act like it too, licking, biting, and scratching other students. Pretending to be like animals. Pretending to be animals. Dressing up in costumes, growling and biting, and just being insane. Part of that is this whole thing that started years ago, which was all your feelings are valid. Validate your child. You know, indulge their, indulge their self-esteem, everything that they think and feel, you know, pursue your inner child. All this nonsense started years ago. And it's come to this. 
everything that you want, every insane thought, every you know idiotic, ridiculous thing that you can imagine, it's all valid. We have this lady a few a few years ago. This was a lady of Wikimedia or Wikipedia. They're like a company that runs Wikipedia. Questioning the concept of truth. What is what is truth? Do we need truth? Can we live better if we say there is no such thing as truth? And and that's what Kant said. Was it Kant or Descartes? One of them. They're all the same. What do I know but what I experience? What is truth? I don't know what it is except I exist. I think, therefore I am. That is the only truth that I know is is me, is my self. It's like in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned. They decided that they were going to do what they wanted, that they determined themselves they became a law and the truth to themselves and so my idea is my idea is to to tear down these foundations the foundations of this philosophy that a god is here to tear it down and nothing is off the table nothing you know i've talked about voting i've talked about democracy nothing will remain except what we have in scripture that is it you can forget about your bill of rights you can forget about your constitution forget about your liberty forget about everything that you love your capitalism your individualism your all of your gay rights nothing Accept what God commands, what God has given us. We will tear everything down to the foundations, and then we will tear out the foundations and light them on fire for all time. This garbage will end. The garbage of Darwinism, of the Enlightenment, end it. We will end all of it. And everything that followed because of it. I don't care i don't care anymore you know i i talk big and i always you know i always wonder when 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 this finally comes and i have to actually do something will i be able to i don't know we'll see we'll find out i'm i'm a little tiny nobody in my tiny little apartment saying a bunch of big things that I don't know if anybody's listening but we will we will see and it's gonna take me a while I've, I have so much to read I have books on the Enlightenment I have books on history I have books on eschatology what else? I have books on Christian nationalism I have books about people that don't like Christian nationalism and I have all this the stuff that I'm dreading the worst of all is to read the stories of all the people that have destroyed themselves or or have been destroyed, you know, by the transgenders, by the gays, by the government. You know, there's so much. There's so much out there. It's just, it's insane. That's, that's, I'm not looking forward to writing that. That's going to be the first chapter, but I mentioned the other things the the books that i wrote because i'm going to put them all together and this is just a, a wild thought but it's going to be a, a a primer for christian nations you know reformed soteriology the sovereignty of god election salvation all that stuff and then presuppositionalism which goes hand in hand with 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 ripping this stuff down because this is basically cl classical apologetics, except for philosophy, political and social philosophy. It's the same thing. It's the same underlying idea. Human reason, human science, we'll build everything on top of that. that that's what cl the classical apologists believe. 
And so those are going to go together. I'm going to put them together, and it'll be one. Well, it's going to be a fatter book than the other one. But that's the plan. And uh, anyway, like I, like I said before, please pray for me. That's that's what we. This is this is what we're. Uh, this is what you guys have to look forward to. It's it's going to be a wild ride. Hondo, Hondo, Hondo.